We're looking at some of the basic Java vocabulary today, and to do so, we're going to go over some of the key terms we're going to use as we start class. The first one we're looking at is public. As you guys were remembering from last time, we looked at public as the main way we're actually showing visibility in Java. And when we talk about visibility, we're looking at how well we can we actually see what that code is inside our programming environment. And so public means that we can see it and anyone can see it. So public visibility means it's available for everybody to see. The next piece of vocab we're looking at is the word class. We used the keyword class the other day as we were making our first beginning projects. We had a variety of different classes we were doing from a class that couldn't even do anything to classes that could actually print information. A class in Java is the way we represent an object. And so the term class is what it is, is a blueprint for that object. So the class word Act, the class keyword acts as a blueprint for an object. And so our class files will have our code inside them and they'll be stored inside our packages. The next thing we're looking at is the idea of a string. In Java, a string is a very powerful and important keyword. It's in fact one of the tools we will use most of the time. In fact, string processing and string manipulation is one of the ways as a programmer that I have been most involved with using anything from here in class and school to actually programming for a business environment. Using words is something that we as human beings use all the time to communicate, and so string processing and using the word string, the keyword string that is in Java, is something we'll be using quite often. Note that string is capitalized, and as such, it denotes that it's an object itself. And we'll talk some more about that as we go through. Our next vocabulary list, word on the list is going to be package, and a package is what we've been using to actually store and organize code. And a package, how it looks inside the computer, is just a folder. There are a couple of rules we have to use when we're actually dealing with packages. The first rule that we have is that packages will always use lowercase letters and that packages will be uh, simple one word chunks that will be concatenated with periods because it will denote that there's a subfolder inside that other package. So if we have first dot that, we have a that folder and in the, that folder is inside the first folder if it's our package for our project. Next one we have on there is the idea of MVC. We're going to do a quick little introduction to MVC. MVC is a paradigm for programming, and with the paradigm for programming that is MVC, we are using it to actually explain the way we're dealing with code. M is for model, V is for view, and C is for controller. The model is what we actually write the code, the objects we're making, the structures we're creating for our code. The view is the stuff that we will see as a user on the screen, whether it be a console or otherwise. And the controller is the part of the code that does stuff. And we'll talk about that separation and packaging later as we work through our projects. The first thing we'll be putting inside our controller package is going to be our runner. And in fact, the only thing we're going to put inside the runner is one simple easy thing, and that is the PSVM or the public static void main. So our runner objects that we'll be making will look the same right now here at the beginning of the year, as well as later on as we go throughout the year, because all it is going to be is something that will start our program and get it running. Object Another keyword that we have to use with Java, again, starts with a capital O. And object is what everything that we create as a programmer will be. And an object, again, is anything represented by a noun inside Java. So it's the idea of any concept or serious coherent idea that we deal with and create. And we'll use quite a lot of objects as we do this. We're going to be introducing UML today just as an idea. And UML that we'll be using is actually a way of showing code by drawing pictures. It's a way of showing relationships between components and showing how they can actually relate with each other by using quick and simple diagrams. The next thing we're using in this is going to be a period or the dot operator. The dot operator is a way that we can show that something belongs to or is inside of something else. With packages, we have the package on the right is inside the package on the left. It's showing that nesting folder structure. Inside objects, we have a pa uh, the main object and then we'll have a dot and its component object or data members or methods. And so the dot is a way of showing what's in, what on the right belongs to or is a part of what is on the left. Next thing we have is system.out and system.out.println. System.out.print simply prints the contents of what's inside that parens to the string regardless of its line wrapping ability. It just drops the information out on the screen until it fits the edge of the line. When it hits the edge of the line, it will automatically wrap around to the next line, continuing on over and over and over and over. However, system.out.println, or println, will be a way of going to print the line and then goes to the next line after that automatically. So it'll print the line and return. Like you're writing on your paper for your line paper in school, you write one word, draw the next line, write the next word, go to the next line, da 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 da. In Java, we will also be using quite a few keywords. Keywords are the words that show up inside Eclipse by default as that lovely purplish color. They're nice, bold, they are thick, and we know that they are important. 
As we see these keywords, we'll be going over them and addressing them as well. The first ones we've talked about so far, public, class, and package, as well as the fact that we have reserved things such as string and object that belong to Java as well. But the keywords are the ones that we will automatically use that Java owns and controls. We will also be using variables. And a variable, again, is just a way of storing information, storing an idea of something or a reference to something. And we'll be making variables all the time, just like math, just like we have an app in there, but even more so. And a variable that we'll use most often is the idea as a reference to an object or an instance of an object. And so we'll be making object instance, and then we'll give a variable for that instance and go from there. A value is something that will be stored inside a variable. And a value can be a reference or an actual stored value, and we'll talk more about that as we go through. Methods, of course, are verbs. They're things that happen, that do, that exist. They run. They're actions. And we'll be making a couple methods, starting off with our first project and continuing on throughout that throughout the year. But again, methods, main part to go for this first lecture is methods or verbs. Finally, the last thing we're going to talk about today is the semicolon. Our friend, the semicolon ends every single line of code that is a statement in Java. So remember, these are for statements only. This does not go when we actually declare a class, when we are declaring a method, but only on the interior statements that fall within the squiggles of our code. And that's it.